How are you guys doing? Going to do a little form lesson today. I'm going to give the stream about a minute to start off and see who shows up. And uh, we'll go over some cool stuff. Let me get myself something to drink. You get to see my new and improved location, I guess you call it. <laughs> well, I can train and I can go get myself something to drink at the same time. Look at that. And because I live alone, I can drink out the bottle and no one can complain. Being a man has its perks, boys. <laughs> All right. So uh, I've been just, just like trying to get myself back on track, doing my own training. I get up in the morning before the sun gets up, you know, do all the crazy stuff, trying to get myself back in shape for the summer. And uh, now that it seems like there's some glim of hope for uh, human existence. <laughs> but uh, I've been, you know, just doing a quick little... Uh, skim of like the Tai Chi videos that come up just to see like what people are talking about and you know it's really not much at all going on that I can see that's been su suggested to me but I did notice a lot of different arguments and I started thinking to myself okay well you know I take for granted how how little people actually know about Tai Chi and the other lineages and what and in martial arts in general it tends to happen and people become very cultish and religious like and you know Get sucked into a little echo chamber and uh, confirmation bias, right? And what you'll tend to see, I guess I want to take these medications off, is like, for instance, how when I would go to like any of the parks in like Chinatown or in Queens or anywhere I would go, like where the actual you know, real Chinese people practice, you'll you'll notice something is that, and I've said this before in other videos, there'll be village cliques from back in the mainland China. In Chinatown, you'll see this really often where they'll, for instance, Columbus Park, right, is a good example, where they'll, there's like several several areas people will go and like practice, right? But even in those areas where they click up, there's like lunchroom table little groups. And those, those groups, they're friendly with each other but they don't pass techniques onto each other. So it, it's very difficult to, ex, to explain this because it's very strange, but me as an outsider was able to get more information than being one of the mainland FOBs. You know what I mean? <laughs> the FOBs are the ABCs, if anybody knows what I'm talking about. So, and because it's kind of like these like unspoken grudges from the mainland, I guess. And then you mix that with westernization where, you know, people go to their school and their lineage, their lineage is the Bible and there's nothing else. And then it gets degraded over time. So like, you know, for the last hundred years since the Mao stuff, you know, they kept removing the martial killing intent stuff and making it more sport and more like, you know, health. And yada, yada. so, over time, you have a, a library of Tai Chi that should be like huge, and then you have like these small f pieces of it, a little, f it's like a jigsaw puzzle. And then, you know, one lineage will have like this group of the jigsaw puzzle, you know what I mean? And the other one, and they don't all have all the pieces. So, what I started to really consider is like, like why something, well, I've never actually went out of my way to actually do, do this, but to actually explain my form and why my form is so different and my theory is so different because the people that I've learned Tai Chi from were from every lineage. And what I would do is I would go and I would try to steal at least three techniques every time I touched somebody's hands. And if I was able to do, if they were able to throw me off, or I see they did something, I would say, okay, and I would check that compared to my version of the form. And I'd say, well, is this better or worse? And then I would keep adapting my form. I did this for 10, 15 years. So there's techniques, you know, and I actually had a little notebook where I would like keep the person's name and like the technique I stole from them. You know, because I was thinking, you know, eventually I would write a book and like have this whole thing, right? It didn't work out the way I wanted it to. So at this point, my form is, you know, it's based on top of William Chen's form, you know, but there's, there's moves that are taken from every lineage of Tai Chi. And there's some things that, you know, I've purposely gone away from and I purposely added. So what I, I guess I'm just going to go ramble loss because it's going to help me to get my my idea in order and also to explain it to you guys but i want to go with like the big stuff i was thinking of 
You know what I mean? Um, first off, it was like the feet. I noticed like in three different videos from China, in, in Chinese, they were arguing about this. Should your toes be gripping the ground or should your feet be like relaxed? Or how, what, what I do with my feet is I, I just place them down and then I just let them melt. <laughs> if Now when I talk about fascia, I'm talking about fascia from the uh, um, Thomas Myers, you know, anatomy trains idea of fascia. And I look at it as 12 basic patterns. I used to teach this before I even knew that I used to teach the starfish. And whatever the starfish patterns can do is where the force lines can go. Your myofascial system is basically, you know, when they're talking about the big groups and the, you know, the anatomy trains where you're dissecting like muscles in one sheath, you know, the feet, the tendons in your feet are actually attached to your head, and especially the cervical tuber and stuff. So like, if I was to look to my left, that twitch in my eye triggers a pull in all the tendons across my back, all the way to my feet so that I can run, so I can change direction. Okay, so as soon as I turn my eye, I'll start, to, and this is what you'll notice, like, um, if you stand on one leg and you don't, you don't practice this, if you close your eyes, you'll lose balance, or if you look one leg, you'll lose balance. This tends to happen because all of your muscles are connected. So when I, when I talk about, like, a, a, like fascia and the chain, I'm talking about a linear, or a line that runs from one part of the body all the way down to the ground path. Not necessarily, but generally speaking, okay? So when you grab your toes, the tension in your toe will travel up the rest of your body. Not only that, but you know, when you create tension, you create a lock in the energy pathway. So uh, uh, the vibration can't travel through. So it makes you a lot easier for you to be thrown around. I mean, it also makes it easy for you to injure yourself because you know, something that's tense can only take energy on one line. Does that make sense, okay? Um, yeah, so that was the first thing I really was, I, I noticed uh, yesterday when I was doing some research. The other thing, and this is really like, you know, my idea of how Tai Chi was used for fighting is so different than what you see now in the Yang style China because they, they took out more than half the moves. And even the authentic lineages don't teach it the way I've been hit by old dudes. <laughs> okay? <coughs> it's a, that's not how it looks. And you'll see, there's some guys on YouTube that, throw, that, that, that you'll see very rare that show Tai Chi as, a, as an infighting system where they're actually hitting you. Um, but you know, there's, a, there's so many details to go over and then there's going to be so many arguments and debate about this. But what I can tell you is, uh, you know, I've tested my stuff for, I, I mean, I can legitimately say at, at least 2000 hours of like, you know, I, I, I can legitimately say that, you know, like how many, how many years did I spar and do this and do that? And then like, you know, over 20 years, I have to be between one and 2000 hours. So, and I've, you know, I've been known to let people come at me, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's not like, you know, I'm, I'm just playing pity pat push hand. That's, that was never my thing, you know? Like, in fact, like, you know, when I go to meet us, like, I'm the guy that really picks on because I'm the freaking, you know, iron body kung fu guy <laughs> that they think they can get away with beating up on me or the other people are older or they're injured. So who's this? Hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah, patty cake, bro. Fucking patty cake. Yeah, so I'm doing these lives because I don't feel like editing videos and, and uploading and doing all that nonsense. It's just a pain in my asshole. But uh, yes, yeah, Seven, if you want to, to be finding a game that like doesn't have like that SJW, you know, infection and isn't like insane with hackers, I'll come play. <laughs> but um, so that's the deal with, uh, with that. So how do I explain this to everybody and where do we even start? Because there's a lot of things that are so different about why I do the move and how the move is done and how the move would be applied in real life. Um, also, my entire form, even though it's based on the stepping of William Chun's form, the details are very different. There's a lot of extra moves. And what I would normally do when I'm teaching my regular students, I would teach um, what's almost William Chen's form. It's a, a very basic version of my form. And then little by little, I start adding the extra moves. You know I mean, so I use Williams, Williams Chen's form as a base. I do it square, meaning I do a preparation action phase or a chamber and strike phase. So there's only two moves to learn. Not, because again, when you're trying to learn Tai Chi and they teach you in a circle, circle has 360 degrees, 360 points to remember. When you do a square, it's 90, 90, 90, 90, but all three, four 90s equal 360. Your brain only has to process four things, right? 
I want to get down to two things, which is just a chamber phase and an action phase. So there's compression and expansion or a retraction and expansion. Okay. So it makes the form easier to understand and it makes it easier to use the little levels. As you progress, it doesn't, the, the form doesn't matter as much, but that gets to a whole other uh, line of reasoning. So when talking about like how the, looking at the, the fighting application and also the pathway to being able to use this shit, you have to start from the external level first. And it should be practical and, and with frame and geometry. And this is where a lot of the young style people fail, and even the really good guys, is there's some really good young style guys right now that are out there, Leon, some whatever. But when you watch them spar, it's I mean, yeah, they're good, but they're not gonna they're not gonna be able to hold up against like fighters. <laughs> and the reason is that because you know they're they, everyone's enamored at the gin or the internal energy, right? And then a little bit, and, and I'm not going to argue because it's true. When you get to a certain level, that energy will usually pr overtake strength and technique. But to get to that place is extremely difficult. It takes years, okay? And how many of them actually get there? The other thing is that if you have the geometry and timing of the handsets, the handsets on themselves being external work it's a chess game so why would you not want to have that chess game down and then have the gin and the internal stuff where the chess game doesn't matter and that way you can fall back on the chess game when you need it and that's the the mistake of most of the young style people is that they see the highest level masters using like all this internal power and they want oh i want that but they don't understand that you've now you have 10 years of training and you have a 90% chance you're not gonna be able to do that, okay? Why would you not want to have something in your pockets effective next week or within six months? And that was my, you know, my goal. Cause again, I came from a, a Tai Chi lineage that was just about punching people, okay? Like William Chen style, I learned it in the nineties, they were just hitting people. There was no Fa Jing, there was no wrestling, no, you know, there was push hands, but I didn't even learn push hands until after I left my first teacher. You know what I mean? And I went back. So to me, it was always boxing, it was always hitting people. And then as I started to progress and start, you know, searching for other people, I started seeing the rarer styles and, you know, the people who were, in my opinion, more authentic, but the lineage is way less known. I mean, this guy's doing all kinds of different like lineages that people would think of like animal styles in Tai Chi, like there's monkey Tai Chi, there's mantis Tai Chi, there's you know, all kinds of, you know, weird stuff that goes on. But uh, just the fact that you're looking at a system that was based on white crane snake as the main foundation, but then you're going to sit there and say none of the moves are strikes and everything's wrestling means you're a fucking idiot. You know what I mean? It means you've never got punched in the face before and you have, you have no idea of how to fucking think for yourself. Okay? So... Look at it, William Chen, how William Chen's observation of the form, right? Every single move is a punch. Like literally every single move is a punch. So every time I turn my hip, here's a block, here's a punch. Okay, I actually turned my hand doing that. Okay, every single move is a punch. This is a palm strike. This is also a punch. You can punch with the first knuckles, you can punch with the second knuckles, okay? So every single thing you do is some kind of strike or punch, okay? You have dotting which is stabbing at the fingertips. This is all in the classics. So that means every single time you press forward with your fingertips, you're stabbing someone in the eye or hitting them in the throat. So every single thing you do is a physical strike. It's not, oh, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? This is a, a young style thing that's gotten out of hand where they say, oh, it's not, of course it's not martial art because you, you guys are so far removed from the martial art and being tested or testing yourself or actually thinking, well, how am I using a life or death situation, not in a controlled social environment Obviously, after 10 generations of this shit, you're delusional. You know what I mean? And only like the 0.05% of, of the masters, like, you know, can actually use that shit. And they can only use it against 50% of the population because, you know, it's, the real deal is they get caught up, you know, with, with people who actually have like good hands. They're going to get lit up. You know, like I want to see, you know, like, I want to see some of these guys. I don't want to mention specific names, but like, I want to see some of these big chi guys. That are actually good. Let me see you spar with a Wing Chun guy. Let me see you. Let me see you spar with a Muay Thai guy. Let me see you spar with a boxer. 
not just one of your students, not somebody who took a couple lessons, that's like somebody legit, because you're the master going around the world, let me see you at least spar the guy. But they never do it. It's everything, it's always in this, you know, arena where they, it's very low control. Like, at least let's see you up against something. You know, and I'm not talking about, like, it has to be a violent encounter, but at least something where you can actually see movement being tested. Okay? It can, it can be, listen, I've sparred hundreds and hundreds of people. Okay? Like, only a couple of them got retarded. <laughs> okay? Like, you know, sometimes you go a little too heavy, but you give yourself a hobby to keep going. You know what I mean? I, I'm not saying you have to get into a ring and fight all the time. You know, a lot of these a lot of these challenges can be done in a very controlled and gentle way. If you want to say gentle, but the point is like, you know, you're, you're, you're lying to yourselves. <laughs> if you think that Tai Chi doesn't have strikes and, and, and that my Tai Chi is not you know, authentic. I, I would say that because I know I don't have a, a lineage I'm loyal to, it makes my Tai Chi the most authentic because I don't give a shit. <laughs> All I care about does it work. Can I hurt you? <laughs> Cause that's legitimately my goal. Okay. Can I hurt you with this? And at the end of the day, my, my goal is to not have to hurt you, but in order to be able to not have to hurt you, you have to start being able to hurt someone terribly first. And then from that level, you escalate down to the point where you become so far ahead of the average person that you can control them. Okay. It's the same thing with jujitsu. Okay. You're not going to learn like, I mean, well, in my opinion, you shouldn't learn, just like these like fancy moves and control techniques. No, you should learn how to fucking break someone's neck on day one. And then little by little learn how to control people. Cause when you get into a fight on the street, you need the most dangerous shit first. In classical Korean karate or Taekwondo or, or karate, the most dangerous useful moves are taught first. Okay. A spear finger to the eyes, a front kick to the throat of the balls. These are the most simple and most dangerous moves to use. They're taught in white and yellow belt, okay? The fact is that over 50 years of commercialization, people don't know how to use them anymore. They don't have the mindset to use them. It goes to the shit. All right, so let's, let's start off with like, uh, okay, understanding like the gin issue, right? Like, you know, you have different energy forces in the body. So why would I say that the geometry and frame obviously has to come first, right? And everybody says, oh, the frame doesn't matter. It, it, when you get to Bruce Lee level, whatever these guys' levels are, yeah, the geometry, you know, and this doesn't matter as much, but it really does because you're still using the base geometry. You learn the large middle frame forms, even when you're out of alignment because your body has internalized it along the fascial pathways, the 12 night major patterns, right? Your deep back line, the superficial line, the spiral line, you know, all, all these lines of, of muscles, which is basically saying like, you know, what train of muscles from my hand to my foot can I take off in one sheath and that work together in one unit? Because, you know, I was in med school, they, you know, they teach you segmented anatomy where it's like, you know, you go into a gross anatomy lab and they say, oh, this is how a bicep works. And they'll pull on the tendon, okay? And they'll pull it and, oh, well, this does this. The guy's dead, so you don't realize that that's not just doing this. You, you know, arterial oblique sling is also creating tension. You know, you have you know, tensional satorius. You have like an entire chain of muscle that is activated when I move my fingers. It may not seem like a lot, you may not feel it, but you actually have an entire train of muscle being used, okay? So when dealing with forces, right? If I was to punch you and just punch you, a normal punch, right? There's a wave of energy that happens. When you get hit or you get pushed, what happens? You get hit and you feel a thump and you feel something that passes through you, right? That force that you felt is the jinn, okay? That's the, the, the jinn they're talking about. The, the energy force, the, it's like a, it's an actual tangible force, right? It's kind of like when you smack a, a, a balloon with water in it, you see the water move around. Okay, fine. So, yeah. Sounds like a little hot. So when you feel that force, for instance, okay. I throw the punch, right? And you get hit. Fine, normally you'll feel like, you know, oh, I feel my, my hiss and I get hit and I feel that response, right? The force is not connected to your anatomy, okay? It's a potential thing that's passing or being caused by your anatomy. So that's the, the thing that, of separation, when people go, oh my God, he's doing some cheese shit. 
you're actually able to take those waves and control them. So to a very fine motor level, that's a whole other thing that takes time to get to. So, but the idea is that when you're actually fighting with this shit, you, it would make more sense if, for instance, like, okay, um, I'm trying to figure out how to articulate this to you guys. Let's just say that I'm doing a uh, ward off, right? And the guy puts, uh, I don't know, I go to hit him with a back fist, okay? This is my, my ward off. And then I go to do my ward off and I want to throw him, right? There is a, a, a pressure that you feel in your body that it's that wave. And then you can learn to control that wave outside of the parameters of the normal geometry and the, and the normal um, actions that elicit that force. Okay, and that's why you'll see me sometimes. I can just touch somebody and you see their body jumping around. What's actually happening is my body's been so used to doing all of this that when I grab them, I can articulate that all inside just by imagining the thought. If that makes sense. The same as when you go to the bathroom, you don't think about which hand you hold your junk with, right? You just kind of go and then you can draw your name. You don't think about it after how many years you've been taking a pee. So it's the same idea, okay? <clears throat> it just seems ridiculous because it's like, how am I able to, to control those forces, right? <clears throat> um, let me try to get into like why I do the form, how I do the form. We do the, let me think about the best way to do this with you guys. <clears throat> so we've gone over the foot thing. That was the first thing that really bothered me was the foot. It should just be completely limp and loose and just like slap down like wet, wet noodles, okay? Um, so the geometry thing, right? Anybody that tells you, oh, well, the form doesn't matter, then why'd you just spend 20 years doing the form, right? Why is it that, you know, when you're doing all your Tai Chi tricks, why is it you still have to maintain central equilibrium, right? Why is it that, you know, you don't do this and then try to fajing the guy? Why don't you do that? If the form doesn't matter. Yes, at my level, I can be in any position and I can make it work. But the reason I'm able to do that is because I've taken this awkward position and I've created a ground pad and I've created these channels because I've learned from using the base lines that I can route that bad alignment into what should be a good alignment because my bones are still working, <laughs> okay? So that's why a lot of these high-level Tai Chi guys, you know, they're bullshitting themselves and they don't realize it. They're, they're, they're in their, their echo chamber and they're not really getting anybody to, to challenge that thought. Yeah, that's what I... <laughs> that's what I try to do every time I take a shit, but I, I can't help it at my age, you know? I'm getting old, bro. So... <laughs> All right. So we're doing uh, the geometry first, right? So you're sitting there... Let's see. Um... What should we go over first? Because there's so many fucking details to this. All right. Uh, I want to go over the stabbing, stabbing, strapping. Okay. So basically, what, and how I look at fighting is that we have hammers, right? Spears and blades, right? So a hammer, right? Spears, okay? Tip of the finger, spears, whatever. Or blades and shield in a sense. There's basically three components. So... When I go through the form, I'm constantly thinking, okay, every single move I'm doing, I'm thinking I'm going to hit somebody and tear their head off. So, right, I'm not just picking my hands up. I'm walking and breaking something, okay? My elbows are hitting somebody. My shoulders are hitting somebody. I'm constantly in a position where I'm doing something bad to somebody. This is a hook. This is a break. This is a check. This is a fill shot, right? So every single move has to have this... And in the process of the move, it has to have how is that going to work in a fight as it is? Not like if I'm going to change it or would, no, no. This has to work in its position as it is. There's no, oh, I have to, like, for instance, people do the opening of the form, they do the, the demo, it's a double hand push, and they all do this, and they fall back and step back. That's not the form. It's not the form. If, if you can't use this, and ground yourself and deal with that from this position, you have to do this every time, the move is wrong, change the form. So that's my mentality, okay? Like every single thing you do has to have an application that works there and now. Um, so in my form again, it's like, okay, so you have Pungent Arm is the only thing we have. 
So when the sinking runs a lifting, right? So from the thoracic junction, your body, when you're born, it, you're in full from your heart, okay? So most of the form is basically you collapsing in yourself like this and turning in and then expanding out and opening up. And this is basically where most of the form is in one way or another. I'm super exaggerating this, okay? I'm going to turn my toes in. I'm going to scrunch everything up in a ball. Like if I could, I would fold myself into like a, like a potato bun, okay? And when I unfold myself, you see I'm like that, everything unfolds, okay? <clears throat> so that's most of the power is coming from this core screw drilling of one of these, you know, 12 paths or five, eight directions, whatever you want to call it because it's going to be arguable. The feeling should be that my, I'm an iron bone puppet surrounded by dripping fucking meat. And that's the best way to describe it, okay? You guys still talking about this fucking bathroom over here? So, my head goes up to the North Star, and the North Star pulls you up. So you actually want to get your crown to pull to the North Star and go from your perineum, you want to get grounded into the ground. So I just let my tailbone, like I'm about, like I'm about to sit, so here I am, and I'm just, I'm just about to sit down, but I don't actually sit down. So you see how like my spine straightens out and I'm on the sit bones, right? So if you're on the edge of a chair on your sit bones, actually called sits bones by the way, you, you're not putting the weight down, but you're just there. And I'm going to pull my head up and that's going to take that simple protuberance and roll it up. And what that does is it pulls your back slightly up. That creates the bow of your spine and all the tissues around it. So now I have this hollow thing and I've actually made myself into a, a trampoline in a sense. It's basically what's happened, okay? Now the power from all this comes from a sneeze. So when you think of a flinch response, <gasps> right? A flinch and a sneeze, your body can only do so many things, guys. So the, the, the system is binary. A sneeze or a flinch is, <gasps> right? It's like you take a breath in and you crouch and you cover your fucking head, right? Oh, shit, right? Come back and oh, shit, right? Oh, shit, <sighs> okay? <gasps> so that deep breath in and that flinch, okay? And then the sneeze, <clears throat> that too, right? So you have this expand, contract. That is your, your bellow system. Okay, so when I expand, it's that, oh shit, and they tell us hem and ha, right, and, and I think that's the correct terminology. <laughs> yeah, so the correct terminology is hang and ha, right, um, but the idea is to have that flinch of, oh shit, so I'm fighting, right, it's a narrow, compressed band. One is a expanded, and one is a compressed line. So we can span to the magnetic circle, and then we compress to electric line. And that's open and close, open and close. Magnetic expand on the ball, compress line, attack go in. The very, very common sense kind of thing you think about. When you think about the pun or the feeling that I'm looking for when I first saw it before, how do I explain this? If you took your hand and you press against it, and you push against it, but you don't want to feel that jump out, you want to stay there. And at first what happens, you'll meet the force, meet the force, and then you learn to like, you're like but then what you're really looking for is have this fullness. And it's really expanding the joints in all directions. So you're going to push here, push here, and then push against the fingertips. For the beginners, your weak fingers, take these two knuckles here, and then just press in, and just try to find the line, okay, where you're not pushing, you're not trying to push really hard. You just want to feel the compression, and you want to feel that it's a solid line to the ground. Once you have that, that feeling is the feeling of the form baseline. Before pump, before pump is the bridge set feeling, okay? Like, what does my bridge feel like? So you want to remember it's iron wrapped in cotton. So I need you to feel like you're running into a metal pole. Every time you touch me, you should feel bone. 
and you should feel bone that's posted into the ground. And you should feel pain, okay? Every time you touch my body, you should hurt you. That's what Tai Chi, like, if, the idea that, oh, it's, oh, it's, no. They didn't say you never use force against force. They said you should avoid use force against force. It, it's, it's, it's inevitable, <laughs> okay? So my thing is start with force against force. Start with something tangible and then work your way away from it. Start with something that works immediately and then little by little you go and you work away, away from it. Okay? So I know that if I have a ground half to one knuckle and I punch you in the eyeball, you're going to have a fucked up day. That's what Tai Chi should do to you. Okay? So the whole idea is every single movement, every single component is, is framed. It looks soft. It, and this is why I say to people in other videos, you can't tell who has this stuff because and that's another thing. I, I don't let you feel my power. You'll touch me. And then I'll move the other joints, and you'll feel my soft skin, and I'm never let you press into my bridge. But then all of a sudden, you get hit with a wall, and you're like, where the fuck did that come from? That's the effect that you're looking for on the base level. It's a boxing style. It has to hurt, okay? And it should hurt on accident. It should be incidental. So it's like, for instance, if uh, I do the opening of form, you run into my fingertips, you get hurt on your own. It's not my fault. If, you know, you come up and you're throwing a hard punch and I intercept it and I hit you in the radial nerve, you're going to feel fucked up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If I go into a ward off left and you try to run into me, you're going to feel fucked up. Okay? There should be something where every single time I turn towards you, you're, something sharp is pointing at you, something hard is pointing at you, and you run into it, you fucked up. All right? So... That's the, the feeling, okay? So the feeling is, can this withstand impact and not be disturbed, okay? Is the first level, that's a bridge, okay? So when I do a posture, it may look like I'm, I'm, I'm chilling and my hands are relaxed, but if you actually were to touch my hands, it's like running into a wall, okay? It should never just be empty. It should never just be, uh, it, the difference between being gentle and being weak Okay? Think of like uh, a huge bodybuilder or like a, some powerlifter guy, and he has a tiny little dainty girlfriend. It's not that the guy doesn't have that strength, she just doesn't get the feeling. If he wanted to, he can grab her by the head and fling her like a round up. But he doesn't. That's the mistake. Was like the, and I, I'm saying this for hundreds of years gone by. I told about, about when Chun dies too, because you'll feel the master so soft, and then he touched that guy's hand one time. And then that guy goes, oh, I heard the master, he felt like this. And he teaches it to somebody else. And then they hear it fourth person. And then 50 years later, it's not the same thing anymore. It's completely different. So you want to have this idea that can this hurt people? <laughs> okay, can this, not, can this lay people out? And if it doesn't, you have to say to yourself, where am I fucking up? How do I fix it? How do I turn it on myself to fix this? What I did was, you know, I was lucky because I had good teachers in the beginning. And when I started searching for like the real stuff, I already had the mindset of being in over a hundred something situations and working in the field and fighting and this and that. I already had the mindset of, I know what's going to take somebody down. I know what will take me down. I know what's going to take for you to lay me out and you don't got it or you do got it. And if you got it, I'm going to steal it. <laughs> okay. If you don't have that, then you have to start thinking, shit. Is this going to, would this actually hurt me about yourself, right? When you're doing this move, would, would this work against me, <laughs> right? If, if, if I do this form this is soft for 20 years and you've never felt real force on your body, I don't care how many, what your master's name is and what his lineage is, if you've never had someone come at you and try to pick you up and fucking slam you, you're, you're not going to be able to apply it. It's, it's not, and then on top of it, you have to be able to take that and apply it in other contexts. So this happens to all martial arts systems that they don't cross-train with other people. When a boxer goes and trains with a Muay Thai guy, he stays in his boxing game and he plays, right? And they'll play each other. Most people don't do that in the systems. The Wing Chun guys stay in there, Wing Chun, and they do their chi style bullshit. Wing Chun's not supposed to be about chi style. That's, that's like saying, like, I, I, I don't know how... I don't have a good example. It's just like it, it's like saying McDonald's is only about a happy meal. <laughs> it's like it doesn't make any sense, okay? It, it's like you get locked into these ideas and these concepts. 
you're, you've got to be able to take that and now in free flow with somebody who's not going to play that game. How do you apply that game? And it's not that the, the style can't do it. It's just that like you did not go and do the work to get it and program it in your system. It's like you have to have an external stimulus that triggers that training. So it's like you could be the best, you know, Tai Chi wrestler guy, and then you go up to an Olympic judo guy and he starts doing stuff that you've never seen before. You're going to get caught because you've never seen it and you have no way to respond to it. So that's a, a little problem. All right. So going back to the feeling of the flow, right? So we have this bridge where I want to feel solid. My second teacher, Avi Schneider, right? He said, you want your body to feel like an al dente pasta. It should be firm but pliable. It shouldn't be limp and it shouldn't be stiff. You want to find that al dente place. So, ah, imagine if you could stretch your hands out like this all the way and you're going to push, not, not extending your elbow, but you're going to try to push your arm as far away as you can, as hard as you can. Right? And push, 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 push. And then you're going to release that push little by little, all the way off until the point where it's completely off. Now you want to open it and start to open it again. That point where you first start opening, and going back to the sneeze or the flinch response, I want my pung set up to feel like I'm just about to start to sneeze. It's, it's literally the beginning of the sneeze. And I'm right there. That, that's where I'm solid. I just, I, it's like the oblique slings release and like my, my, I feel like my ribs here flare out a bit. And then that pushes down on my pelvic floor. It's, it's the best way to describe it. Because like, at that point, I'm already set up. So now I'm already, I'm already, I'm already pumped, right? This is the first level, okay, of what the feeling is. So that on the outside, I may look the same as some little old lady doing the form. When you touch my body doing that form, it does not feel the same, okay? I feel like a tree that's moving, and they feel like a wet noodle. <laughs> You don't. You want to feel like a tree, <laughs> like like a like a metal tree, <laughs> like a really scary metal tree that's gonna like eat you, okay? <laughs> so we have that pung set up here, that feeling, right? So it's really just the beginning of the flinch response, the beginning of the sneeze. And now I want to have that feeling all the time. So once I start to commence with the form, I've already started. Once I went here. See, it's so many years of programming, you have to actually slow this. Once I drop my hip, kick my head, and breathe, I'm already in pump. I'm already, I already feel the bubble starting. So it's like that feeling of that first, because right here, in all the old karate styles, you have this move, either this or this, the chumbi or ready position, because people used to carry their money in a satchel. You used to get a little, a little bag and it would be tied to their hip. So then they want to pay for the thing, take the coins out of the little satchel and they pay with their little coins. First thing someone tries to rob you is gonna do is put their hand in your pocket or grab your satchel. In the hood, you get your pockets done, people, first thing you do is gonna come grab you your pockets. So it's the first move in every form. Get the hell off my pockets, okay? Don't touch me. <laughs> get off my junk, <laughs> okay? Don't touch my no-no place. So right at the beginning, I've already gone to flinch response. I've already, I've already gone. This is already a move. So as soon as I switch my hip, kick my head, sit down, and most of the time I'm already in that posture anyway, it's just triggering a hip. One of the hips to turn off and settle, and the whole machine opens up and starts. So, first of all, I'm in my normal standing posture. You know, I'm generally connected to the North Star. I have my ting ding you know, fucking central you know, equilibrium. But, I'm not like set up in the Tai Chi fighting bubble, right? There's always some part of it that's stuck in your body from just doing the form. But I can feel the switch where as soon as my the, you know, the hip drops, as soon as this happens, I feel like it's like, a, it's like a transformer. As soon as I do this, and you can probably see it because there's a mirror. Once this happens, I'm in fight mode. And it's literally that much of a change. In shooting or boxing, we call it C-shape. Where if you're going to shoot, you want to be in a position where you're, you're, you've turtle shelled your back. Right? So I may be here standing up. But shooting, I'm going to be here. Boxing, I'm going to be here. Where I've opened my shoulders and rounded my back. 
And there's a bunch of reasons for that. But going back to the trampoline bow power, is I've made my back, my spine, into a bow. And these are the, sh the strings. So I'm going to fire off of, this is the, the, the piece of the, it's firing from. When you're dealing with incoming forces, when the force is traveling through your bone marrow, when it hits your spine and it's not in that C-shape, it hits and then it wants to go out the path of least resistance. So if I'm sitting like this and someone pushes me, it's going to either go out through the shoulder or go out through my back and I want to get lifted off my toes, right? If I'm crooked here, it may go out this way, it may go out this way. So the idea is to have that linkage so that as soon as the force touches me, it wants to roll away. What was his name? Chu, I think his name was. He used to teach in New York City also. He's also the same lineage as Shen Man Ching. But if you see his form, his form is like, it, it's so round, it's ridiculous. It's like, it's, it's almost obnoxiously round. It's so obscene how round this guy's form is. If you could find him, I think his name was Chu. C-H-U, okay? Um, but that's the idea. So once I get into this drop, now I'm already in the, in, the, in the fight. And once I do that, my entire body is in this iron, like, bone marrow sheath thing. <laughs> Where, my, in my first lessons, I was taught that the, the bones should be treated like copper wire. And you really only think about your bones. So the idea of talking about the muscle and the fascia didn't come to me for years later. Everything was about bone marrow, marrow washing, and you know, expansion and contraction of, of the system to move the bones. It's a completely different outlook on this shit. I gotta turn these fucking notifications off. It's really annoying. All right. So we got here. Fine, we're good. Why is this dog staring at the fucking wall? He's fucking weird. Okay. So I have this always set up for impact. The best way I can describe it. Yes, you could say, oh, we always want to avoid taking force. <clears throat> That's great. But you have to start from the place of you're fucked. <laughs> okay, start from the place of, oh, shit, I'm screwed. You can't start from a place where you have advantage. You have to start from a place where you have disadvantage. You, you have to start from a place where your technique failed. What else do you have? So my whole thing about the form is that how do I make this useful now? How do I make this useful going through it? How do I make that compoundingly useful so that later on, like going through the high level techniques, not only does that help my high level technique, but I can still fall back. And what I mean by that is the high level techniques of using gin projecting force. If I was to be, like, I can throw a punch from here, right? I can throw a punch from here. And I can get almost the same amount of power, right? I can touch the guy and inject the force. But in the end of the day, that wave that's going to come out is the same pathway, the same neural pathway, the same kinetic pathway. Whether I did the full pull, like ward off, whether I did this, or if I just used my yi and touch him, my intent, and use the internal pressurized forces and redirect them mechanically from inside. Okay, it's not, no, no, what these fucking guys tell you, there's nobody that's sitting there and just like, oh, meditating and they're fucking, throw, it's not how it works. Through years of doing these forms and these postures and dealing with these pressures, your, your nervous system and your body create these neural connections. So that when you start to think, move my finger here, I can move my finger here. You can start to treat the forces, the, the pressures, I'm going to say pressure, okay? The pressures that are being generated between your body, the other person's body, buoyancy, force, gravity, whatever you want to call it, okay? And interacting, you can control that with micro tension and micro movements that you don't even perceive yourself. You're doing it through your imagination or through thinking in the yi, right? When I start moving my hands and I'm talking, do you think about it? No, you're just doing it because you're so used to talking. I don't think about my ambature when I'm speaking English. I just do it. So this happens is after a while, you start to have the feeling of the form in your body. And when you start to get touched, you can start to think, oh, I feel this, I want that. And then the body says, oh, point over there. But it's not pointing with your finger. It's pointing with the pressures that it's learned to generate in real life. So it only makes you stronger 
to be able to do a full punch, okay, and then learn to go and generate that from just the yi. It's the same concept, okay? But the difference is when you're one of these super soft guys, you just don't have the punch to fall back on. You just don't got it. And then you're going to wind up doing it for 10 years and all of you suck and none of you can use this shit. So wouldn't it make more sense to actually have stuff that you can use in self-defense while you're building up that arsenal? Doesn't that make more sense? <laughs> okay? And wouldn't it make more sense to say, well, you know, the guys over there back in those days were warlords and, and people, you know, fighting warlords. Wouldn't it make more sense they had a little more vicious moves? You know, it's just, you guys, it's just, it's kind of, it's kind of more annoying. <laughs> okay. So we got all that thing to myself. I'm going to do like a, a finger jab or I think to myself, I want to project my force and push him with my yi, the intent, to me feels the exact same. Like when you see me touch someone and I don't like the no touch fudging stuff, I just touch them and they start flying away. In my body, I literally feel it, I, I feel the same tingling and pulse wave as I do as if I was to do this, but I feel it here. I feel it literally inside my body moving out. It's not like it's just magical yi shit. No, I've spent my entire life throwing punches. So my body wants to do that. So now if I just think it and someone's connect to me, I can project that force because my body's learned that pathway. Okay. Um, so going back to the handset, when I look at the, the Tai Chi as an infighting handset, there's some rules, right? And the rules are very similar to Wing Chun. And so as soon as I, I see somebody, and, and this is the same thing for Tech one, how I teach it anyway, is again, projected potential forces. I'm locked on the guy's spine in three places. I'm either locked to his occipital protuberance, thoracic lumbar junction, or the, or the lumbar staple junction. And I go for those three points because there's, there's a balance hole. There's a, there's a little leakage I can escape energy to. So for instance, if I wanted to bounce somebody and they have their hands here, I will purposely project right under the protuberance in the little hole, okay, right in between the sternum behind their heart, or right, be right between where um, alpha S1 is. And that's what I'll go for first, okay? But in general, I'm attacking their spine. So everything I do when I sit up, I'm carrying and I'm moving. For instance, if you're my opponent and this is the center, Right? When I go to sidestep or if I keep, I'm not going to just play this back and forth. I'm positioning and making angles and doing all this weird stuff, right? But as I re-angle myself, let's just say, you know, he throws a round house kick, <coughs> I parry and step off, right? Or I roll for a hook. When I roll and I go for that hook or I go to that side, I'm thinking to myself, there's like a tether from my head to this person's spine. So that no matter where I go, I'm being pulled towards this guy. So if I size up this way, I'm still going this way, okay? It doesn't matter which, which side I go towards, I'm not just stepping off and all my energy is here. I'm stepping off, but my energy, I'm preparing to go this way. So I may be looking this way, I may be moving this way, but I'm pressurized this way. This is happening throughout the entire form. As soon as you're the opponent, now we're linked up and I have my intent going seeking to go towards your center. When I'm playing with people push hands, I said this on the video, there's three rings. There's my center, there's his center, there's the center of center. Now generally what I'll do is I'll play at, at the center of center where you see people meet up there and the whatever. And I'll let them play in this area. If it's a really low level person, I'll let them come into my circle. But even when they're here, if you pay attention, I still have that flinch response pressure, that little baby first sneeze. I'm still at his spine. So all I have to do is increase the flow. See what I'm saying? It's like, it's like a water hose. Um, you are thinking that thing, they say, oh, don't, bend, don't really bend your arm, and you imagine your arms like a hose of water and they can't bend it. It's the same idea. It's how much of that pressure am I allowing through the joint and through the the, the, hitch, the hinge, and also at what's velocity and what's speed. So if I do ward off, I can have my basic 
fringe pressure where I have my, just my bridge, right? And I can use that, okay? Or I can go and I can use the whole thing at full velocity. You see what I'm saying? So that it's all planted. Now, the idea with trapping range is I saw, actually, I saw a video, I don't want to say his name because he's actually a kid, whatever, like, I'll, I'll, um, whatever. Guys, the Australian kid, his father died. They're really, you know, good. They do the other, the other young style. And they were doing exercise today where we call it elbow block or elbow roll in my style in, in type of the And it was doing this and then trying to do it backwards over the top and was connecting. And the main difference I see in a lot of these is that they don't understand this tracking to the spine and connecting to the opponent to come with the empty force, right? It's not even about kind of, it's you're connecting telepathically, okay, to the person's actual being, which is connected to his spine, the rod, right? That's allowing his ions to freaking propagate up and down, like a, a, a lightning pulse, right? In the old Taoist theory, you know, we're on a flat metal disc with the you know north star on the top, and that north star is positive and the ground is negative. So all of us are projected from our heart space in this little toroid field. Long story short, is I want to attack his his circuitry, okay? So everything I do is I'm, I'm focused on his spine. If I catch an elbow roll and I touch you, once I make contact, the reason I'm sticking is because I'm actually attacking your spine. So when I make contact with you, there's that, that first breath flinch, the sneeze effect. And that pressure is directed to your spine. If you move, I'm going to stay on you, but I'm going to find the next hinge that's going to roll towards your spine. And I'm going to keep seeping in. When I'm doing it for fighting, I'm not going to stay in this section. As soon as I touch you, whatever you do, I want to break and go in. So on first contact, it should be disrupt, roll, step in, smash. It should be entry, follow, finish. So there's no chi sao, there's no, it shouldn't be any of that. Like when Chun for instance, they get stuck in this game. That's not how reality works. It's whoever makes that first contact and can pass the first bridge gate, the other person should be getting hit. Okay? It should be instantaneously. It should be, okay, we're doing this rule and you fucked up. You don't just have to go. I'm going to break something. And this is a mental choice in these lineages. Their, their game is all about the magic and the having powers and, and you know, not, it's illusional shit. You're, we're talking about can this withstand someone has a gun to your head and you have to knock him the fuck out. <laughs> How are you going to use this, bro? How are you going to do it? Okay? So, um, keep you on, on that point, all right? So, my energy's always reached out with that small flinch thing. And that's my default at all times. So, when you're practicing your form, I have a lot more moves in my form than most people, okay? I'm explaining it all the time. But it shouldn't just be, okay, I'm doing this over here and my hands relax and I'm moving. That's nonsense. At first, Position, can you block a hook punch? Is this gonna stop a hook punch? If it doesn't, your style shit. Your style shit. Okay? If your beginning of ward off can't block a full string punch or a baseball bat, your style is shit. Tell everybody on the internet I said it, I don't care what the name is. Okay? And then you tell them to come to me and complain to me in my face. Okay? I don't care who it is. Come come at me. Alright? So you're setting up first thing. Oh shit. I gotta be able to cover my face. Right? Elbow. Block, right? This is a block. This is an incidental strike. This is his job, right? Elbow strike. He comes in, he's running in. Here's like my little Don Salah the low box. I forget the guys calling one shot. The point is I'm already covering this, this angle. Right? I can use the roll. I can use this to intercept. So I'm already doing damage. This has to be in your head. This is not just me, oh, I'm doing a dance. It doesn't work like that. But not only am I set to do damage with the frame, if you notice, my intent is still at his spine. So I'm already tracking him. I'm already tracking him. I'm still tracking him. I'm still tracking him. I'm still tracking him. I'm still tracking him. Still tracking him. Everything I'm doing 
is still to his spine. Even when I break to the shoulder line, my energy from these fingers is still, I'm still seeking him. I'm trying to reconnect my tentacles back to his spine. <clears throat> it's just that I go too far, that inside my brain I'm feeling, it actually feels like I'm getting dragged back, because that's how many years I've done this. That it feels like my hand is, is being pulled. As soon as like I'm playing with somebody, and the whole time I feel like I have to stop myself from slipping in. So if you notice when I'm, when I'm pushing, when I'm playing with people, I'll play the center of center because I don't want to just run them over. Because that's normally what will happen. I'll just run them over. So I play this game, but I have to feel like I want to go and I'm, I'm holding myself back. Okay? It's like, and then I want to go, it feels like I'm getting dragged in because when I get touched and I put that pressure, any deviation on their part is going to set the wheel up and now we start to roll and every time I start going in and going in. So I have to actually hold myself back. Meaning, not allow myself to cross into them and finish them off. But that's what push hand should look like. It should be once he makes contact with this. Do I have a stick here? Let me see if this makes sense. Oh, okay, I can't find my a scrimmage stick, but I'll use a sword. Okay, is this going to work like this? Once there's a pressure, right? Just say, I feel his pressure is on this side of my spine. That pressure allows me to sit and roll that way. But I'm not gonna just roll away. I'm gonna roll and I'm already retracting. You see, I'm tracking to him. So I had that sneeze pressure, that, that first amount of energy, and I'm going to start tracking to him. So that as soon as he touches me, I'm already here. Okay, once I do one off, I'm already here, okay? So there's like these rules to get that to happen in the form. For instance, you know, your hands, your elbow should be where you can't see them very, except when you're chambering with a rear elbow. The elbow should always be in your peripheral vision. So a lot of times I'll see people doing a single whip like this, and this is completely wrong. You know, because once you can't see your elbow, your shoulder, your humo joint is, and uh, the, the scalp is like all out of whack. So that's, that's no good. Um, so it's like little rules like that, how I, how I use these techniques, right? I have people see my elbows all times. Generally, I don't, when I'm face to face with somebody, the wrist can go between this girdle and the sternum. So if I can touch my hands together like this, this is the end of my reach, right? Once I cross this, this compresses the, I think it's the bicep tendon, I don't remember exactly, but it basically throws your entire anatomy out of whack. Right? I can do this to check, but it puts me in a very bad position. I, I don't want to be stopped with two fingers here. So you want to never cross that line. Same thing on this side. Once I start going out here, it get, gets a little funky. So the hand has this range, okay? It's kind of like a little uh, isosceles triangle, and these two isosceles triangles make an equilateral triangle. And that's basically my fighting trajectories. And then what I'm doing here is I have my frame wherever I am. As soon as he touches me, I have that pung feeling and I'm already seeping, but I'm also not resisting his pressure. So I have an out pressure from my bone marrow and then I have an in pressure that's on the skin of the bubble of the pung bubble, which is my fascia, which is the outside of the system, the ball. But the inside of the system is a rod with a spear being pushed this way. So as soon as he touches me, this wants to roll, but the spear wants to go forward. And that's where you get that bow and arrow effect. Because as soon as he touches me, the whole system wants to respond to that. So in the yin-yang thing, if someone puts pressure on this side, right? This side, I would allow to become yin to his yang, and then he starts spinning, and this becomes yang to his yin. Because if he's attacking from this angle, his body has to have a receiving side. You cannot be defending every position and attacking at the same time. So that's not possible. It's just not possible. Okay? As soon as they go through a jab, I'm open. So as soon as they go through a right cross, I'm open. Okay? Any technique you do, there is an opening. You are, you are, it just you have to open the gate to throw the arrows. So it is what it is. <coughs> I hope that's making a lot of sense to you guys. Okay. So... We have that pressure, fine. So as soon as I roll away, now I'm already looking to hit him. 
I'm not even looking. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a response. What happens if I'm playing pushing under this light pressure and my seeking pressure, right? Because I don't know, I don't know the Chinese term. The is a listening skill. But there's also a, um, an asking. I forgot how to say it. And there's a seeking, okay? The seeking jin, is my opinion, is the second most important next to the pump. I have to have this I- idea that as soon as I open up pub, I start tracking for a place for the ball to roll. And as soon as I have that target, which is someone's spine, now I release to that spot, and all I have to do is open the floodgate. Okay? So when this person touches here, this starts to roll, I can either roll it and allow it to spring off and just, you know, um, slip and spring. Or I can allow it to push the system and use the other side or do some other to why I steal his energy in one way or another. But the idea is that you shouldn't be reliant on the opponent's energy. You shouldn't be reliant on uh, magic fog, gin, tricks, and all this kind of stuff. Okay? So, you know, over the feet, one over the... See if anything else that was really getting me. Um... So, hmm. trying to figure out what else is, is decent here. Because this is like, you know, it's a bunch of like concepts that I want, I want people to be able to take this and put it into their form. So it's like, you know, you're doing your normal form, you can adapt the concepts into your form. Listen, if you don't, you, you can sit there and keep arguing and saying, oh, he's wrong because he's not doing it like 99% of these other people. Or you can say, this guy can kick my ass. And he's trying to help me for free. Maybe I should try it. <laughs> okay? Maybe I should just try it once and see what happens. Okay? But I notice a lot of people play push hands and they don't understand. The whole point of push hands is not to wrestle. The whole point of push hands is chi sao. It's the same idea. What is this? Oh, okay. It's in the fucking room. It's, it's the same as Wim Chun. Okay? But the, the way that they put the hands set together is different. But it should be the same thing. All right, I'm, I'm trying to hit you. <laughs> I'm trying to hit you and tear you up. So when you're doing, let's just say the four directions, uh, ward off, roll back, press and push, that does not have to be to those four movements. Ward off can be thrown to anything that's coming in a straight line towards you or from the angle because you have Pung Lu, right? So you have ward off, which covers the front and then you have to wipe off. And then you have your Tan Sao and your, your roll back right hand, right? So. This can take a, you know, like a, like a block, a kick, it can do all that kind of stuff, right? This is a palm strike, this is a block, okay? This is a back fist. Okay, you have a lot of like little seals and things like that that can be used. But what I notice is that people don't have tracking. So not only do they not have pung, if they have pung, great. A lot of rules that they can get the pung feeling, but then they don't have tracking. So, and staying within the, the, the frame. So I don't, you know, like, until you get to a super high level, where your tendons and your system can redirect forces on any line and any neural path, you need good form, <laughs> okay? You have to have good alignment and good form. You can only start doing the weird angles and stuff after a long time. So don't compare yourself to the little old man master who's, oh, he always looks like this. It looks like that to you, but he did it for 30 years, <laughs> okay? It, it's like Dr. Shorthand. It looks like scribble to you, but to them, he just wrote a fucking dissertation. You're not getting it. You're never going to be that guy. Okay? So just stop wasting your life. You're going to keep getting your ass kicked. You're going to keep getting out of shape. And you're going to keep making everybody look stupid. <laughs> you're not that guy. You have to hit people. <laughs> so when you're doing uh, water, for instance, when you get to that position where I'm out, once my wrist hits here, I'm done. Not only that, I should have already been tracking with this hinge or this or this to his spine. So what happens is I roll him out and he gets out. I'm not going to go and be here. I'm already here. I've already, I'm already being dragged. So if something's coming, I already, I'm already there. I'm already there. Okay? I'm never double heavy that way. Okay? There's always at least 30%. 72, 28, right? There's always 28% of my energy attacking his spine, okay? And then the other side is when it'll be 42, 72% attacking, so I'm actually trying to hurt you, okay? We don't go 100 because that'll put me double heavy and last one take the, you can take the limb. 
For instance, you're throwing a punch in boxing, right? I'm not going to go and throw all my weight, but then go extra. Because if I miss, there's nothing there. I'm going to fall over. He can grab me. He can pull me. I want to get to a position where I put as much as I humanly can without losing my structural integrity, and I'm not going to fall over. So that's why I say it's you know the rule of 72. Okay, yin yang and the small dot and the, you know, the small dots. You never want to be over 72 percent advancing, and you never want to be over 72 uh, percent retreat. So there should always be a 28 percent differential. So that means that let's just say I'm going 70 percent, 72 percent going out to block. I still got 28 percent tracking your fucking spine. As long as you're my opponent, my I'm literally joined through this etherical cord to your spine, and I'm tracking you. Okay, so I'm actually tracking you energetically. I know it sounds weird, but with pressure, okay? Meaning the feeling of the force that's coming to your hand. Or, you know what? If you just swing your hand around like this, right? And then you feel the blood go to your hand. That's what I feel. That's what it feels like. It feels like there's this... It's like a weird like pressure that wants to go to that guy's spine. Even when I'm kickboxing your spine and I'm, I'm moving, I'm moving, but I'm still feeling as if I'm being dragged to his heart. Like I'm being dragged in. Like it's a, it's, a, it's a vortex and I want to get sucked in. I want to go in. How do I go in? How do I go in? So when you're doing your ward off, you shouldn't be ever over here. You should never be where the wrist is outside the shoulder. And you should always have forward, not just forward intent, Seeking, seeking pressure to his spine. Because the goal is to either smash through whatever in front of you to get toward the spine, or to grab his spine and rip it out. That's really the idea of martial arts. Uh, Central line theory in, in karate and Wing Chun is the same. If I'm in front of you and I'm standing straight, you have all target, 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 right? Target, 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 right? If I turn at any angle, the targets change. You have the target here, the pressure point here, the pressure point here, saliva gland here, side of the throat here, um, AC joint, right? And you have, uh, this is a fucking nasty little thing because there's no muscle rows here, right? So you have like these lines of, of pressure points. You know, where you go, temple, there's another nerve thing right in here. This is, like the, this is the vagus nerve, right? So you have another spot where the muscle doesn't grow. Okay, floating ribs, spleen. You get the idea. So everywhere you go, if I cut him down the center line to his spine, there'll be targets. And you, you, know, you memorize a couple of them. You don't need to know them all. But that's the idea with push hands. Is when I'm rolling and I get a single hand push on you, that's not a push. Okay? The five gym effect is so that you felt my body power. That's not a push. That's, it's a, it's, I'm hitting you in slow motion so that we don't kill each other and keep playing. Okay? If someone, when I look at push hands and someone's like goes to like grab me, I ward that off the same as I would in karate blocking. Okay? It's the same concept. He touches, he's going to touch my shirt. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Okay? But as soon as anyone don't touch me, in my head, every single match you've ever seen me play, I'm already thinking, I already had the target. There's his throat, there's his soul plexus. I'm not hitting him, but if you watch my videos in slow motion and you actually pay attention, that's what's going on in my mind. Every single time I'm here, I could go here, but I'm not going to. I could go here, but I'm not going to. I could go here, but I'm not going to. I could go here, but I'm not going to. Okay? It's never just, it's never just all oh, really like play wrestling. Okay? That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. When I shoot somebody off and do the five to me, and it's just my way of saying, I'm not going to inject this force into one knuckle into a soft target, which is going to incapacitate or kill you. That's push hands to me. Okay? So when I do you know, my ward off and my you know, fairly reshuttled push, let's say, right? I'm not trying to push the guy. I'm trying to take his rib and puncture his lung. Okay? I do it like this to throw him away. I want to break this guy. So to be tight, I'm going to smash as hard as I possibly can. 
Okay, I, I want to go through this guy. That's big force fist to me. <laughs> okay, you know, and I think it's kind of funny. People say, oh, there's no strikes in Tai Chi except the five fists and all the elbows, you know, elbow strikes, shoulder strikes, really labeled strikes, but nobody uses them that way. They use them as a bump. Miyamoto Masashi said the shoulder strike should be able to kill a man. Like, you should be able to hit somebody so hard with that shoulder strike, you collapse his fucking stone. That's Tai Chi. Look at, and I think a, a good thing is, is to look at Baji and, and White Crane. Like, the, like feeding Crane, functioning White Crane, look at Mantis, look at like Baji, okay? And like the White Ape stuff, because you do the C and Chun Li Fett also. Because you'll see a lot of the moves that are in the Tai Chi form that are not being practiced the right way, but you can see that they're definitely shallow and derivative, or five, you know, five ancestors, eight of them, or The The derivatives are the same. Can you use only internal power? Of course. But you're not going to do that in the beginning. Okay? So instead of saying, oh, I'm going to do it for 20 years, it's bullshit. And every single one of those guys that you see, like, you know, the martial man guy, all these, like, high-level masses, none of them were Tai Chi purists. Every single one of them who can fight at all using Tai Chi, no force, every one of them has sparring, sparring fucking time in a hard style first. The Adam Minza guy did Tung Long, I think, right? He did uh, Mantis, right? Um, the, a lot of the other guys, they did like White Crane or they did, you know, some like Xing Yi or some, something where there's an actual hitting and striking and sparring element. And because they had that program, now they know this is the vector of a punch. This is this, I can do this. They didn't just start off with 10 years of fucking dancing and say, oh, I'm gonna go fight the UFC. This is, this is insanity. It only happens in Tai Chi. You know, it only happens. It doesn't make any sense. So, so you have this element of keeping the geometry, okay, and constantly seeking. So I guess to wrap it up is Pung is the most important thing. Pung is only on, you know, is, is basically on in a sense, right? Being jumped off the ground. Because in order to get Pung, I have to first settle and suck and relax, which is basically on, which is pressing down to the earth. Because I pulled my head up, I have an expanded force, and then I start that breath in and release, you have the upward roll of the ball. So, you know, at the end of the day, though, it all starts with me dropping down. When I go into fighting, the second part is the seeking. You know, listening Jin is great. Can I hear what he's doing? Can I feel what he's doing? Right? It's called listening skill. It's like listening skill in Chinese, they mean like, like braille. Like when, you're, when you're sparring in, in a grappling range or trapping range, you're reading the opponent like you're reading Braille. As soon as you touch me in any part of my body, my entire body is an ear. My entire body is my ear, my entire body is my hand. So it's like as soon as you touch me, I can hear what your body is going to do from the pressure variations. I can hear, if, I, if you grab me, I can tell just from the touch is your weight in your right foot, your left foot? Is on the heel or the toe? Are you going to be moving forward or backward? You want to lift or drop me instantaneously. And then you start to play against that. That's tension. But the seeking energy at the end is, is I'm going to immediately not just pressurize my pung in my own sphere, but now I'm going to take my intent and attach my intent to your spine. So now my sphere is going to be rolled by your incoming force and my linear intent towards you. So your, your, in, your intention is, is a linear electrical pulse, okay? I allow that to hit my magnetic field, which is my pung ball, right? That's the outside circle. Once you hit that field, you start to rotate the toroid field. If you press this, this collapses this, this creates on the spindle an effect, and now I want to start tracking the other way. That is basically the concept. My intent of the, if you think of it like, um, you ever see those coat racks with the wheels and you can push them back and forth like a mannequin? Okay, picture a sphere that's on that thing. And I've attached a magnet to the back of your head and it wants to drag towards you. And every time you touch the ball, so the metal poles drag towards you, but every time you touch this ball, your force whips around it. Your force immediately turns the ball, it makes the ball do something. So now I have your force coming into my field and then pushing me and then my intent dragging me towards you. So that's two basic ways of getting the, the, the force production. Now obviously, when you go into minutia, 
about how I generate, you know, power and the details of a form, and why I step a certain way, how we do whatever. But I want to get the generalization for people so they can see why I look at the form differently, why my form looks different, how my form feels, and how you can apply it to your form on your own. Because we have to fix this Tai Chi shit. It's garbage. <laughs> okay, there's so many fake people that are doing empty forms. And they say, oh, it's so soft and so pretty. It's like, it's not supposed to be soft. <laughs> It's supposed to be malleable, okay? Not soft. It's not with noodles. You can't fight with fucking overcooked pasta. <laughs> it's like trying to bang a porn star with a limp dick. It's just not going to work, guys. <laughs> it's just not going to fucking work, you know? So, anyway, here we go. And if you're actually watching this shit, hit the fucking like button. Don't be scumbags, okay? We need all the help we can get to defeat the algorithms. All right. Especially you, Seth. You're supposed to be my fucking friend. Asshole. Um, all right. So, um, this is, I'm going to review my head what we've done over the last hour. It's been an hour yet? It's got to be an hour yet. Okay, an hour and ten yet. I want to give you guys an hour and a half. <laughs> so, the feet, the, the flinch thing, the breath thing, you're feeling the idea. Um, another way you can get just to understand the idea of framing is you can grab a wall, put your two knuckles on the wall and lean, and just 10 degree lean. Doesn't have to be a lot, it's just, you see this way? I just wanna back up a little bit and just lean. And that pressure that I feel, you know where I am, that's what I'm gonna feel all the time. It's just a slight amount of pressure that creates a stability in the frame, okay? So when I do the form, it looks soft, okay? But you can't tell if I'm limp like a noodle or if there's an iron bar in here. That's the softness they're talking about. So if you just ran to me and, if, and you come to my class and you don't just walk up to me doing the form, you're gonna feel like you're hitting this metal puppet man. <laughs> it should feel like a metal puppet with like cloth around it. That's what I want you to feel. Because I want the fact that if I mess up, you incidentally get hurt. So if you're 80 years old and your first response is to do this, he gets poked in the eye. If you're first supposed to do this, his elbow gets jammed in the solar plexus. It's incidental damage. So as you go through the form, you start to start from the external frame, from practical applications, from things that work, to you know more esoteric hidden applications with things you can't see, <laughs> okay? But in the end of the day, they should be built and predicated on themselves. So, and I can say this one more time, the, the path of projection of force of Jin is the exact same when you're doing from no movement as it is doing the entire move. If, when you see me touch somebody and I fly them out just from opening my fingertips, in my body, the same pathway or the fascial trains, not like you're looking at the, like again, Tom Myers anatomy trains, I'm running along those pathways and I just use them in succession in a very efficient way. And what these guys who are very high level Tai Chi guys, you know, the modern guys you see that can do this stuff, oh, it's just my yi. It's not just your intent. It's you've internalized these pathways and the mechanical, the gears, the gear system, right? And you've internalized these gears and these things moving in such a coordinated fashion that now you can do it and only one gear only one tooth on each of the sprockets needs to move. Whereas when you first start, you, know, you have a gear system and each one of these sprockets has to move an entire half turn or entire turn to get the effect. Because if I'm doing this, right? And look how many gears are rotating. Look how many gears are rotating, right? For me to arrive at the same place, okay? Once I get that, I can shoot it out from right here. So I didn't have to make all these gears do a full, you know, 360 degree turn. Now they're doing a five degree turn. Then the subconscious understands these pathways. So now that you push me to a weird angle, I can take that off angle and route it to a good angle. Whereas at a, a lower level, you didn't have those pathways built up. You have the musculature, you have the um, proprioception, mechanoception, you know, basically the nervous system availability to be able to handle it. <clears throat> but you're never just fucking do 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 flying around, okay? It doesn't work like that. So, get that, okay, cool. Um, yes, yeah, so going back to seeking, 
when you're doing your push hands, you know, everything should be a strike or a, or a potential strike or an implied strike. Someone gets his hand, double hand push on you, you gotta think that guy just grabbed you by the face. Okay? You gotta think that guy just grabbed your titties. Alright? He you, you've already been hit. If you had a knife in his hand, you'd be screwed. If you see my other videos where I teach my students privately, everything we do is a knife in your hand. So when I'm teaching push hands, I'm teaching push hands with two box cutters, with two razor blades. So as soon as I touch you, you got cut. So every time I'm, we're playing push hands, the knife is trying to seek into your spine and carve you up. Okay? So my hands are daggers. My fingertip is a knife. Okay? And every time I'm playing push hands, I'm trying to block you from touching me while breaking something off of you and going in to stab you. Okay? So that, that's just my mentality, right? Um, maybe the next time, I don't want to overload you guys. That was just a, the basic stuff I was thinking about the last couple of days when I was thinking about where we're going to go with this, this channel. But I, f I feel like this is the answer that everyone's looking for, that no one wants to hear. So I'm going to start giving it to you guys in extreme detail of all the crap that no one's going to like and everyone's going to say, because they already say I'm an asshole now. Wait until you see what I'm going to do later. He's an asshole. Why is he so mean? Because <laughs> I'm better than you. Okay? Yeah, I'm, 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 a, I'm a freaking Adonis of Kung Fu. Okay? That's why. I don't, I don't know. Alright. Um, what else are we going to go over? I want to start explaining my form, why there's different parts of my form, why I have five versions of a single whip, but I just don't think it's going to get to that point. We'll see how many people show up. I'm also going to make a, a Discord server for the channel. So I'll have that up next week and hopefully we'll get people to come into the Discord and you'll be able to advertise your Tai Chi stuff and ask questions and all the other good stuff. I think that'd be the best bet because um, I, you, you know, everything else sucks and I don't trust anybody. All right, I think that's pretty good. Um, I want to make sure I left you guys with enough stuff. I know everybody missed me and I miss you guys. So you got, you got, yeah, I think mean, it's a lot. Is it? Um, oh, here's a good one. Everyone's complaining about tight hips. And this is something I, I would show everybody if I was you. It's a, a, a new loosening exercise. So everybody knows the swing all loosening exercises. This is the only one that I do. All my loosening exercises have a common application. So for instance, um, my loosening exercise here, this is, this is an actual combat application. This is an underhook to a drag. This is an uppercut. Okay? Okay? Then we have... These are all applications. I know it looks like they're swinging your arms. This is the application. There's, there's applications to all of these. Where you know, you're actually using this for wrestling or using this for some kind of power or some kind of punch. Okay? This one does not have it. All you're going to do is for people with the bad hips, tight QL, is you're going to start your swing arm and you're going to bend the knee on the side you're swinging to. But keep yourself forward and keep yourself like you're about to sit down on the, on the bar stool. And so what you want to have is when this knee is up, the hands are going in that direction. And you're going to start to feel your back may crack. But what I've found so far is that of all the loose exercises, none of them hit this place that everybody has the most trouble, including me from sitting down for so long and walking because I'm locked down. So this little alteration really helps a lot. Okay, and you want to progress it, get up, you're going to turn the hand over and tap yourself in the pec. That's going to do is going to help trigger point your pec to open the sucker up. It also help crack it up for a thoracic spine if you want to get that far. But generally, all you need to do is very relax, depending on what level you're at. Okay? Now, if you want to get really you know, crazy about it, you can start lifting your knees, depending on how good shape you are. If the average person doing Tai Chi, I, I think they have a problem just turning their arms right now. So. You know, lift this leg, sit down and lift. Sit down and lift. Shift, sit, lift. Shift, sit, lift, okay? Now, I guess there could be common kind of application to this, but. <laughs> I really hate these notifications. I wish they would just turn them off on the screen. All right, so that's basically that. Uh, questions, comments, accusations in the, you know, in the thing. Uh, email me if you got any questions. I'll try to have a Discord up by next week, if you guys want to come check it out. Uh, I'm going to try to do at least minimum one stream a week if I can. Um, if I can get more, I'll, I'll do more. It's 
the question of, I don't want to overload you guys with content, and I don't know exactly what everybody needs, and I don't know where the best place to start this approach is, because I have so many things that I want to say that are going to shake up a lot of people and piss off a lot of people. So, I want to do this sparingly, and I'm also trying to do it to be helpful, because a lot of these Tai Chi guys, you know, who are very good in their lineage, I have respect for, you know, that's their lineage, that's their syllabus, but I don't think they realize how much has been removed or disjointed, you know, because they haven't been in those combat situations, and they don't have that intent, you know? And I was also very lucky to be able to travel around and touch everybody's hands and see, well, how does your style do it? And, you know, my system is basically just a collaboration of all that, so I hope that within this year I'll be able to put that in a, in a package that gets delivered to people that is reasonable that they can benefit from, right? So I'll let you guys go with that, all right? Hit me up. I will see you guys soon. And let me know if uh, any questions, right? Love you guys. I think that's all.